called the UN Security Council Resolution 2593, which reaffirms the importance of holding human rights, uh, upholding human rights, including those of women. And that resolution also calls for full, equal and meaningful participation of women. And now we are joined by Dr. Sayantan Banerjee, who is the head of the Department of Microbiology at Ames Kalyani. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Banerjee. Uh, let's uh, try and put this into perspective now. We are seeing that uh, China, of course, is underreporting the cases, so we don't know what uh, the number of cases there are. But if we take Japan as an example, there's a huge surge in cases and in deaths as well. So the concern is that this variant is, uh, is causing deaths, at least in these parts of the world. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, basically, this variant uh, uh, is not as uh, dangerous as Delta that we have seen. But it's, it's much more uh, dangerous than the earlier variant of Omicron that we have seen. The previous Omicron that has affected India was not causing so much uh, severe lower respiratory tract infection, so much severe pneumonia and deaths. Right. But the DS7 has uh, uh, mutated and it's it's stronger than the previous variant of Omicron in India and across the world and it, it is it is probably evading the vaccine immunity as well. Mm -hmm. Now we are not very sure that whether uh, our Covaxin and Covishield, both this vaccine immunity will also be evaded or not because in China uh, the Sinovac vaccine was maximally used, you know, that yes. previously also the efficacy of Sinovac was lesser than our Covishield and Covaxin. Uh, otherwise, uh, this uh, this particular variant is very infectious, very very infectious, and it spreads very fast. But um, okay. uh, uh, and, so and, you... and it's probably uh, more dangerous than Omicron. Okay. But I would say I would say that it is it is much much lesser uh, virulent right. than Delta. So it is a sub variant of Omicron itself. I mean, it basically is an Omicron variant. Uh, but the point is that uh, we uh, one was under the impression that you know as a as a virus mutates, it's becoming less and less lethal because it has to coexist with uh, with its host, and uh, that seemed to have been the case with Omicron. But uh, now there is the fear. I mean, one can also argue that in the Chinese case, uh, they were not uh, they did not have hybrid immunity. Maybe even in Japan, they don't have hybrid immunity, and as a result of that, they are seeing the number of deaths. We are not seeing so many deaths in in. In the US and in Europe, for instance, where also the variant is present. Yes, and probably, uh, uh, yes, definitely this is also Omicron variant. Previous Omicron variant that we had was BA.5. Yes. So BA.5 uh, was also immune uh, evasive. Probably this particular uh, variant that BF7 7. is uh, uh, well covered by the vaccines that uh, the Western world and India has used. Probably, okay. because uh, still now uh, uh, confirmed cases in India is only four in number. You know, uh, till right. till today afternoon we have only sequenced four cases. Okay. So uh, until unless we have enough number of cases of BF7, uh, thankfully these four cases have uh, not yet uh, been mortal in India. Okay, right. so so, so uh, probably what we are understanding is uh, Covishield and Covaxin is uh, having a better immune coverage against uh, the BA7 okay. probably. The BA.5 Omicron variant uh, uh, infected almost more than 50% of Indian population. Yeah. Uh, and it was a very, very mild infection. Probably that would also help us in, in uh, getting us uh, immune boosted. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's uh, let's talk uh, a little bit about this yeah. hybrid immunity that we have in our country. But some people were under the impression that you know the vaccine uh, lasts for about eight or nine months, right? I mean, many of us have had our, even our third uh, booster dose uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, so the point is, uh, 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 do we still have the kind of antibodies within our uh, uh, within us? Uh, since the Omicron wave was in uh, February of uh, 2022, we are in December of 2022. So we have to understand one thing, mm -hmm. it's not that the vaccine immunity only stays for 8 months and it doesn't stay beyond that. It's okay. not like that. Okay. It's the fact that the virus changes right. and after 8 to 9 months or after a year, when a new variant of virus comes, probably the vaccine immunity will not be uh, effective. So we have to understand, there is a clear difference between this. Like in influenza, every year the virus changes, there is something called antigenic shift and antigenic drift in influenza. 
So every year vaccine is needed. It's not because our antibody falls down or our memory cells are not that effective against this antigen. It's because the virus changes. Now COVID also changes. Thankfully, the change of COVID has come to uh, uh, you know a peace with human civilization with Omicron, where the uh, transmission that we have seen in the previous Omicron variant uh, was much high, and uh, you know uh, I'm talking about BA.5. Yes. Uh, where where the mortality was low, okay. but I'm afraid that in BF7, um, yes. uh, the uh, where the previous BA.5 Omicron uh, uh, transmission was less, I think yes. those are the areas which will be affected more. Okay. Number one and number two with areas which have lesser, uh, uh, you know, uh, vaccine coverage or lesser, you know, more effective vaccine coverage will have problem. And the third point which we have seen in India is the cytokine storm that kills people hmm. is probably much lesser in the developing countries than the developed countries because of our multiple exposure to fecally born pathogens uh, through the water and the air. Okay. Probably that, that low cytokine storm that has okay. prevented the mortality in Indian slums is also going to help us again. So right. uh, they are multifactorial, but we have to. We have to become okay. careful. We have to sure. put on our guards. We have to avoid crowded places. We have to start using masks. All right. We have to uh, uh, follow the guidelines. So when uh, we talk about we, you are talking about the general population. But let's talk a little bit about some of the more vulnerable sections of the population. I mean, the ones with comorbidities. And also, uh, you know, Omicron was affecting children, uh, which uh, the earlier variants were not. So now we are beginning to see well, if this is a day, you know, I mean, if we not, this is, there are many uncertainties about this variant. We will not know. We don't know enough about it. But uh, protection of children, how crucial and important is that? So I, I would I would correct you that okay. Omicron definitely affected the children, yes. but the other variants also affected the children. It's just that the children did not have significant morbidity and mortality with okay. any of the variants. Okay. In Omicron, what happened was is cough was less common. Children presented with plain hybrid fever, okay. just like uh, you know, just like dengue or something, without any localizing signs. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the alpha and the delta. Uh, we had children who would present with cough, who would present with lower respiratory or upper respiratory tract infection symptoms. Uh, but uh, uh, just like uh, alpha or delta in Indian subpopulation, in Indian population, in Indian subcontinent, uh, Omicron had much lesser mortality in children. Till now, the understanding that we have for BF7 as well, BF.7 mm -hmm. also doesn't seem to particularly attack the children. The okay. other risk factors uh, like the heart disease, the diabetes, the hypertension, the pre-existing lung disease mm. it still exist. What I would uh, say is particularly those patients who suffered badly from the Delta uh, variant who okay. had severe bout of COVID-19 should be uh, on their toes, should be very careful and you know should get okay. their testing done even if they are having fever without any localizing symptoms. So I am afraid okay. that once a pe person who has uh, mounted the cytokine storm uh, might again develop a cytokine storm in a second infection. So that's, All right. that's another risk group that has to be very careful. And what about uh, people who uh, you know, have symptoms of long COVID? Some people are saying that they still have symptoms of COVID. I mean, about uh, you know, a year or something after they've had COVID. Uh, what about them? I mean, uh, do they have, are they also at risk? So there are two uh, uh, types of people who have experienced long COVID symptoms. One is the people who had severe COVID infection, got admitted in the hospital, required oxygen therapy, required you know uh, ventilation or something, then got cured and had developed interstitial lung disease and lung fibrosis. This is the true severe long COVID symptoms that we have seen. Another group of pa patients had long COVID symptoms without getting severely affected with COVID. They developed a long standing weakness uh, kind of symptom, uh, which uh, is a non specific long COVID symptom. I don't think that the second group is at more risk. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, the persons who have uh, who had developed severe COVID and is suffering from a long standing lung infection. Uh, because of the severe lung damage initially and this has developed interstitial lung disease, lung fibrosis, 
probably these group of people are more uh, uh, vulnerable to get affected and there has also been a, a rise in sudden cardiac deaths and acute you know uh, cardiac events in otherwise uh, healthy young individuals following okay. covid infection uh, and we are yet to solve the puzzle so i would okay. say that uh, vaccination for those right. who have not taken the uh, boosters should quickly go for the boosters sure. and uh, uh, maintenance of the covid hygiene is again important uh, thing and okay. um, so uh, let's let's uh, talk about the spread uh, spread the possibility yeah. how uh, you know the the idea is that these are more virulent uh, strains each strain gets more and more virul virulent uh, in the sense that uh, the point uh, uh, how uh, that it can spread much faster than it basically uh, the older ones are, are, are become extinct is it as a result of that is that what happens i mean now we're only going to talk about bf7 for a long period of time if it is the dominant strain uh, all the other strains would have uh, disappeared no uh, no mark uh, okay. i won't say that this is a more virulent strain okay. i would say we have to clearly understand that hmm. transmissibility infectiousness yeah. is not equivalent to virulence okay Delta was much more virulent strain it had a, a, a potential to wipe out a significant number of people from the uh, world you know the mortality was much higher but this bf7 is a much more infectious, infectious strain. okay it's strain I, I beg really your fast. pardon a virulence it's and infection is different is okay so the word infectious and virulence are, are quite different in meaning is what you're saying yeah, okay Absolutely. okay Okay. So it, it basically is far more infectious, but at the same time, uh, you say that uh, the best thing right now for us all to do is to just uh, start uh, keeping our guard up and start maintaining COVID appropriate behavior, which we've been doing. Uh, just yes. restart it all again. Yes, actually, people are people seem very frustrated to use masks, and and now okay. suddenly the mask usage and has come down drastically. I I I, I don't uh, see people using masks at all. Okay. And uh, overall, uh, the you know uh, the hand hygiene levels, avoiding the crowd, everything has come down drastically. Okay. Okay. So we have to keep our guards up, and probably COVID will keep on evolving and keep on uh, giving this uh, sort of surprises right. again. Sure. So uh, we have to keep our guards up. Okay. We leave it there. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sayatan uh, Sayantan uh, Banerjee. Thank you very much for your inputs and Thank for you, enlightening Mark. us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being with us. Moving on to our next story then, uh, which is uh, from Ukraine. Oh, actually not quite from Ukraine, it's from the US, because uh, the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky was there, and he addressed a joint sitting of the US Congress. And of course, he, he, his aim apparently, according to reports, was to persuade the Republican lawmakers to continue to fund his, fund his country's defense against Russia, because the Democrats are very much doing, this, doing that. Now, uh, he made his first trip outside Ukraine since the Russian attack around 10 months ago, and Zelensky urged the U.S. Congress to continue his su their support for the defense of uh, Ukraine. Zelensky told the U.S. Congress that aid to Ukraine is an investment in democracy. Let's listen to this report. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky delivered a historic speech from the United States Capitol on Wednesday night expressing gratitude for American support in fighting Russian aggression and asking for more. Addressing the joint meeting of U.S. Congress, Zelensky vowed his country would never surrender. Zelensky, who received a standing ovation when he walked into the chamber, thanked U.S. lawmakers for major financial packages that have been provided to his country. It's a great honor for me to be at the U.S. Congress and speak to you and all Americans against 